Hi, my name is Richard Madison, and welcome to the Digimusic Cam series, Secrets of Learning the Guitar. Today we're going to be looking at two important exercises and warm-up exercises, the stretching and the conditioning exercises for your hand. These are going to help you play the guitar better, and um, I'm going to show you some things you need to learn about your hand first. First thing is we're going to label the fingers. You have P, which is your thumb, I, M, middle finger, ring finger is A, and your little finger is C, and this is on your right hand. You have P, I, M, A, C. Your left hand, you have one, two, three, four. Usually don't play with your thumb. And then the tip segment is the very tip of your finger. The middle segment is the middle joint. And then the top joint is called the knuckle joint. On the thumb, you have the tip joint, the middle joint, and the wrist joint. And this is basically how the hand works. You have strength, which is how strong your hand is, and you have independence. So the most independent finger is your thumb. It, it's connected to the wrist, and when you move your thumb, it doesn't move your fingers. The next most independent finger is your index finger. And when you move your index finger, you can see that on the top of your hand, that the tendons are interconnected. So when you flex your index finger, the tendon for your middle finger will move. You can go ahead and try this at home. When you flex your middle finger, the tendon on your A finger moves. And when you flex your little finger, the tendon close to the knuckle moves and you can see it clearly. So this is how the tendons work. They're interconnected on your fingers. So your fingers don't have that much independence. Your little finger has more independence than the middle two fingers. So the middle two fingers, A and M, have less independence than any of your fingers in your hand. So your thumb's independent, your index is independent, and your C little finger is independent on both hands. That's the most independent fingers. And then the strongest finger is your thumb. Your index finger is strong. And then your middle finger and your A finger are a little bit weaker, and your, your, your little finger is the weakest finger. So as far as strength, it's measured in motor units. There have been studies done that show the strength of your fingers when you press I and uh, P together, and you can substitute them. There's not a lot of difference in strength between these three fingers, but your little finger is the weakest finger. So you have strength, and then you have independence. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you some conditioning exercises, and what you're going to try to do is you're going to stretch your fingers out, and we're going to work on the flexors and extensors. So a flexor is when you flex your hand together, extensors are when you extend your fingers. Flexion, extension. So when your thumb flexes, we're going to use the word flex, even though it's called the abductor muscle. It's actually called uh, the abduct abduction or adduction. We're going to use flexion. So you get flexion and extension. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the uh, flexor exercises. So you, you turn your hand like this and then you pull your thumb back. So you're going to do that and then counting to five, one, two, three, four, five, you can move your fingers. Now we're going to do the flexor for the index. Now be very careful when you do these exercises, you don't pull back too far. You can hurt your hand, you just need to be real careful with these exercises, these stretching exercises. So you stretch your index back, move your fingers, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you're going to use your right hand middle finger, you're going to stretch it back, you're going to move your other fingers. And we're going to do these two fingers at the same time, the A and C fingers, bend the back, you're going to flex your index and middle fingers. Do five of them. Those are basically your flexor exercises for your right hand. Now we're going to do the left hand. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to bend the thumb back and flex our fingers. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do our index finger. Flex, two, three, four, five. We're going to do middle finger. One, two, three, four, five. Do the ring finger, third finger. One, two, three, four, five. Fourth finger, one, two, three, four, five. 
So those are your flexor exercises. Now we're going to do the extensor exercise where you're going to stretch your extensor muscles. You turn your wrist over your palm facing down and then we're going to do the thumb first. You're going to pull your thumb down towards your wrist and you don't have to move your fingers as much on these. And you don't even have to move your fingers. We're going to do the index finger and be very careful when you do the index finger. The extensor exercise, you don't pull too hard. Just pull down for about five counts. Four, five. Do your middle finger. Two, three, four, five. Then do your ring finger, little finger, which is A and C. One, two, three, four, five. And then the same thing with your left hand. You're going to stretch down your index finger. One, two, three, four. You're going to do your middle finger. You're going to do your ring finger, stretch it down, and you're going to do your little finger. One, two, three, four, five. So these are the stretching exercises. Another thing you can do is the circulatory exercise where you get the blood flowing in your hands and you just shake your hands down. It's easier if you're standing up. You just shake your hands down and the blood goes to your fingertips so it gets the circulation going in your hands. You can also stand up and rotate your arms all the way down, but basically it looks like this. And then the blood goes down to your fingertips and it warms up your fingertips so you get ready to play faster. Okay, then we're, we're going to work on the coordination exercises next. So the coordination exercises are intended to, to try to get independence in your fingers. So the way you do the coordination exercise is you'll, we're going to do right hand first. You take the knuckle joint and keep it flat. So the, your wrist and your knuckle joint are going to be flat. And it looks like this, and you can see the curve of your fingers. Oh, here's upside down. And then you want to keep your wrist in alignment. Muscular alignment is the first principle of efficient joint movement. So you want to keep your uh, muscles in alignment like this. You don't want your wrist to turn. And you don't want your fingers to turn. And then all you do is we're going to do our index finger first. And do it maybe five times. One, two, three, four, five. You want to keep your fingers straight. Now we're going to do our middle finger. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to do A and C together. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's the basic coordination exercise. Now we're going to do alternation. This is a really important exercise. You, you stick your index finger out. Then you alternate with the other three fingers. When your index finger comes in and flexes in, you extend your other three fingers. This is called alternation. This is very important to do for your right hand if you're finger picking or playing classical guitar. And if you relax your hand, you can do it faster. You see how that it goes, you can do it pretty fast. But you want to keep your, your uh, knuckle joints kind of straight. Then we're going to do alternation between M and A. We're going to put our finger out, alternate between M and A. This is pretty difficult to do because there's not much independence between these two fingers. You're going to feel a lot of strain from doing this. You can relax and then do MA alternation. And the last one we're going to do is the hardest one. We're going to extend the middle finger and we're going to alternate with our other fingers. So this is excellent for your right hand development for classical guitar and fingerstyle guitar. And then we're going to do the same thing with our left hand. You keep your knuckle joint straight with the back of your hand. And then you're going to practice doing each finger. One, two, three, four. You're going to do your middle finger. You're going to do your ring finger. You're going to do your little finger. So these are the exercises. The hardest exercise for your left hand for coordination is you extend your little finger and your middle finger and then you alternate with your index finger and your ring finger. So one and three alternate with two and four. If you can do this, you're, you got a lot of coordination already. But this is a really good exercise to do to get coordination between your fingers. Now a lot of people have tried to get coordination and independence in their fingers. Robert Schumann, the famous uh, pianist and composer actually to try to get independence 
it's a legend that he had this tendon cut between the little finger and the uh, third finger on the right hand, and he had the tendon cut so he could play better, and it, it ruined his hand. And Aaron Shear, who developed the system and these exercises, he practiced the guitar wrong, and he start, he hurt his hands. He couldn't use his hands anymore. So by having these extra, doing these exercises every day, you'll get the conditioning, strength, and coordination to play the guitar very well. This has been the strength and coordination exercises.